Now, one of the things that most screenwriting books, as well as courses, are going to say, tell you as a new screenwriter is to select a screenwriting program and get on to writing. Now, however, there are a ton of choices out there in terms of screenwriting software and more coming every day. What is a beginning screenwriter supposed to do? Well, today I'm going to uh, help you figure out what type of software might be uh, best for you by giving you examples of three popular screenwriting softwares in the space right now. But these are three good points to start with uh, potentially jumping into other softwares based on what you like or maybe don't like about these screenwriting softwares. Maybe what features you like, maybe the price. All these different things are going to help you figure out at the end of the day what type of software you're going to like. And these, are, again, are just starting points. These are not the end pieces. These are not the only three in the market by any stretch. But they'll help give you a flavor of what you like and what you need. So let's begin. Now, the first one on my list is Kitsunarist. Now, you'll find a link for that in the comment section below. I actually do a lot of videos on Kitsunarist. I actually do uh, probably most of the videos on Kitsunarist here on YouTube. So take a look. There's a lot of good stuff to learn about Kitsunarist in this video library. And so I'll link, the, again, the playlist in the, in the description below. Now, the main reason I started with Kitsunarist is because of one of its best features, the price. It's free. This is great for beginning screenwriters because it's a low barrier to entry. So if you're just thinking of maybe trying screenwriting as a hobby or maybe as a profession, give this a try. And that way you're not out a ton of money. It does allow you to have a, a lot of good features to, to look at and to use. So that's why I really enjoy um, offering people to take a look at Kit Cineris first. And again, the link to that particular program will be in the description section below. Now, there are plenty of free versions of software out on the internet, but the reason I like Kitsunaris is, like I had mentioned before, I love the features. It has a corkboard for those note cards. Uh, if you've never seen my videos before, I love to use note cards. I really think that helps, with, helps me and my creative process. There's a research section, which you can help fill out and flesh out your characters. The thing I like about it, it's you, it's in multiple different languages. I believe this one is in Spanish. So if you're a Spanish speaker, uh, it's in Spanish. So that's an, another wonderful feature to have. It's in your native language. And finally, it's writing editor is pretty to use as well. Now you're probably asking yourself, Paul, it's got all this stuff. Why would I not just keep using Kitsunaris? Well, let me tell you. The main reason that you probably don't want to just stick with Kit Cineris is because the developers have stopped working on it. Not because they don't like Kit Cineris, but they're actually working on a new project called Story Architect. So they've taken the lessons from what they've learned from Kit Cineris and applied it to Story Architect. Again, link in the description below if you want to look at what Story Architect does. I also will include my video in there as well, too, so you can take a look at what how Story Architect looks compared to Kit Cineris. The second big thing that Kitsunaris doesn't do, and a lot of stuff that doesn't do on this particular list, is work with AI. I intentionally left AI off uh, this particular list because of features, because it's still really much in its infancy, and people are still trying to figure out how to use AI best in screenwriting programs. Though don't worry, at the end of the video, I'll tell you a couple programs that you can look at that will have good AI in them, or ones that I think, uh, there's, there's one out there, uh, I will also name two that as well as I think you should steer clear from, even though it's a very powerful AI tool, the rest of the program is just so buggy, but I'll get to that later in the video. So stay tuned to the end of the video, uh, and we'll talk about those uh, screenwriting softwares that I think are doing a good job with AI and the one that's not. The last reason to sort of look beyond Kitsunaris into other software programs is just the features. Kitsunaris has a good smattering of features, but it doesn't have everything. Uh, there's a lot of other programs out there that do a better job with different features, uh, such as working with a partner. Um, Writer Duet is a program that comes to mind about that. It's very good about collaboration, so that's something you might want to look into. And even some, if you are really into building relationships with your characters, Scrite is another great program for that. Again, I'll leave um, links in the video below so you can look at those programs and take a look at them. Now, even with all that said, Kitsunaris is a good software to get started with because A, you can get writing right away. No excuses. A lot of times what happens with the beginning writers, they think they can write something. Kitsunaris is going to allow you to get in and start writing right away. So one of the things I really like about Kitsunaris. Second thing, um, it'll figure out what you like in terms of features. If you know if you like this particular feature in Kitsunaris or maybe you need a different feature in Kitsunaris. So again, it's that good baseline to figure out, okay, what features am I looking for and which features um, do I not really care about? 
Second software I'd like to highlight today is Fade In. Now, this is the same screenwriting software that Ryan Johnson of Last Jedi as well as Knives Out uses. Now, that could be a good or a bad thing, depending on how you like Ryan Johnson or his movies. But I simply cite him because it shows you how powerful this software is and how professional screenwriters use it. Now, you know the drill. The link to Fade In will be in the description below. And all the links that I'm going to give you today are not affiliate links. I don't get paid any money for that. I do have a link in the video for my Buy Me a Slice. So if you like this video and you want to support the channel, feel free to hit that up. Uh, or if you want to hit any of the affiliate links for the camera gear that I use, please feel free to hit those. Uh, those will be at the bottom part of the video. I hate to tell you this, but Fade In costs more than Kit Cenaris. Um, it's $79.99 at the time of this video. But, but like any good software, it does have a free version. And as always, I tell people, kick, kick the tires by, by downloading the free version and giving it a try. And if you like the, the, like the aesthetic of the uh, software, if you like the UI, if you like the features and stuff like that, this is a great way to figure out if you like the software. So always, 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 don't just buy the software. Um, try it out first. See if it works for you. Because the biggest, the best software to use is the one that you will use, not the one that I always recommend. So just to keep that under your hat. One of the things I really like about Fade In is it simply works. There are a lot of beta editions of software out on the market right now. Not that that's not necessarily bad, but we're paying for that. And I want to finish products. Is there some bugs in Fade In? Absolutely. Are they um, world ending bugs? No, not that I have found. If you have found one, please put it in the comment section below. Uh, one of the things I do is I have uh, been talking to the, the creator of Fade In from time to time. And so if there's a bug, uh, let me know and I can let him know. And so that way they can hopefully work on that and patch that. So uh, one of the other things I love about Fade In as well, too, is the developer is really Johnny on the spot and will talk to you if you have questions or concerns. And they normally get back to you within uh, 72 hours uh, if it's like on a Friday to a Monday, sometimes even earlier. Uh, I really appreciated being able to talk to him um, who's developed it. It's It's been great. Uh, and you normally don't get that with a lot of other screenwriting software. So another reason why Fade In is another good choice to start with. When I talk, talk about bugs and stuff like that, I'm not talking about the mobile version. I know there's been a lot of hiccups with Fade In's mobile version. I'm mostly talking about the desktop version. That's the one I tend to use the most. Um, and the, the user interface is just really nice. Uh, things just work and they work simply. And that's one of the things I just love about it. Um, it has more features than Kit uh, Again, I've talked about before, the developer is easy to get a hold of and to ask questions. I can't say that enough. I mean, I just got a, um, a comment on one of my other YouTube videos talking about not being able to get a hold of the developers. And they're paying a lot more than what they're paying, what they would pay with Fade In. Uh, so, like I said, I think that's one very big plus for using Fade In is the ability of you to get to talk to the developer and hopefully figure out how to fix that particular problem. The thing I like about Fade In is its collaborate functions a little bit more robust than Kit Cenaris. Probably, I haven't checked it in versus Writer's Duet yet, but uh, it's definitely better than Kit Cenaris. Now, again, with Fade In, there's no AI at this particular point in time. Uh, that's one of the downsides for using this particular software. Another thing about Fade In that is sort of a con for using it, or one of the challenges of using Fade In, it doesn't have extra pre-work stuff. So it doesn't have like an outliner. It does have cards and stuff like that, but it doesn't have a program which helps you visualize character relationships, or it doesn't have mind maps and stuff like that. So, but if you're more serious in your screenwriting career and want to upgrade your experience from Kit Cenaris, I would definitely take a look at Fade In. Again, it's got a free version. Give the free version a try uh, and let me know what you think. And again, there'll be a link in my video, not just to the website, but I also have a how to use Fade In right away too. So you can watch that video and get going right away with writing your screenplay. Now the last suggestion uh, might be a little controversial, but again, when I'm giving you this list, these are just jumping off points. I'm not saying that these three softwares are the only good softwares within the space, uh, but they help you sort of map out what type of features you want, what sort of price points you're looking at, and how, again, how serious you are of thinking of going into screenplay writing. Um, but again, as I said before, previously, the best program that you should use is the one that you're most comfortable using and the one that will help you write your screenplays. So the last one I'd like to have you think about is Final Draft. So at the time of this video, what is out for Final Draft right now is Final Draft 12. It costs $199.99. It is a little on the expensive side, but if you think about it in terms of uh, over the year, 
it actually breaks down uh, to be a very pretty affordable. Calculate it with uh, paying for it on a sort of a monthly scale. It's about $16, $17 a month, which is actually pretty affordable and actually is less than Squibbler, which if you haven't watched any of my videos about Squibbler, that is a price ripoff. You get a lot more with Final Draft 12. Not to say Final Draft 12 is perfect. Uh, it doesn't, again, offer AI. Again, we'll talk about that here uh, momentarily. Uh, but there is a lot of good features in there. And one of the reasons why I like using Final Draft is actually what most people in the industry use, or I should say what most studios use in the industry. You're not, you don't have to use Final Draft 12, but if you go to a writing room, more often than not, they're going to use Final Draft 12 or Final Draft products. And, and so it's, it's good to know how that works. A lot of programs that they use for figuring out production costs use Final Draft format in order to uh, figure out how much the production will cost. Now, some of the reasons why I like Final Draft is a lot of the features, uh, features that I really enjoy. It's got a great card system. It's got a lot of, it's got like a research tab and that you can place uh, and, and sort of have a board where you can place different ideas on. I really like that type of thing as well, too. Uh, I think those are, are awesome. It's just a very robust program. But again, you're paying for it. Uh, it's, uh, like I said, about $17 a month. Uh, but the nice thing is once you buy it, you own it. And do you need to do upgrades if you want? Now, I've been using Final Draft since Final Draft 10, so I've upgraded twice. And their upgrades, unlike Fade In, do cost money. And they're not cheap either. They're normally like $79 to $99, depending when you get the, um, the update. Uh, but some of the updates are really good. Other ones are, you know, a lot of times you can just take it or leave it. Uh, but at the end of the day, still, you can still, you don't need to update. You can still use the, that version of Final Draft that, you're, that you want to use. One of the reasons why not to buy Final Draft, it's a big investment. If you're not thinking of doing professional screenwriting, don't buy it. Don't go out, and if you haven't written a script before, don't go out and buy Final Draft. Uh, yeah, because you, there's a lot of different ways to see if you like screenwriting. So I would not start with Final Draft. Final Draft is, I mean, I need more tools to help me with my creativity. I need an outliner. I need cards. I need to, uh, a place to write all this stuff out. Uh, and Final Draft gives that to me. You don't need that, though. You can use a notebook. You could use different programs. You can use a Word document. You can use any number of things to do the same thing that Final Draft does, but use something that, was, that costs substantially a lot less, like Kit Cineris. Also, at this particular point in time, Final Draft does not have any uh, AI use as well. I'm assuming they probably will. They also their mobile version isn't the best either. It does have a lot of bugs and stuff. Uh, but that being said, it does have a mobile version as well. Probably wondering to yourself, well, what AI type of software would I recommend? Well, the two that I would do would be Arc Studio Pro as well as Story Architect. They both are fairly solid programs. Both have a subscription model though, which I'm not always a big fan of. Though I understand why they uh, do that. It's easier to fix programs once you have a steady stream of money coming in. The bad thing about Final Draft and the reason why the updates always cost money is because they always need money for the mission. There's only so many times they can sell Final Draft. I wouldn't be surprised uh, later on if Final Draft actually becomes a subscription model. But if you're looking for AI, definitely take a look at Story Architect as well as Arc Studio Pro. They both have good uh, ways of, of integrating the AI. Though the part with... Uh, both of those programs, I believe there is a function where you have to, at least with Story Architect, you have to pay for a certain amount after uh, you've bought the program. Uh, it, you only get a certain amount of words of AI per uh, month. That's a good or a bad thing. Now, if you want unlimited AI, but I would not recommend this program at all. Take a look at Squibbler. Uh, Squibbler has unlimited AI, and they also have an AI functionality where you can create images. So you can use that. I think those two things are really cool in Squibbler, but the rest of the program is a hot mess. And if you, as I've talked about before, um, it's also way overpriced. Uh, I think you could basically use a free version of ChatGPT as well as get a, uh, a beginning. Um, you can also get a low-cost mid-journey account for a lot less than having to pay for Squibbler and using Kitsuneris or something along those lines. So I would not recommend Squibbler at all. Plus, they hardly, they ever, hardly ever talk to you uh, through customer support. So those are three suggestions for beginning screenwriters. What do you think? Did you like those suggestions? Is there any other ones I should suggest to people 
who are just beginning to start out. Again, these three are not the end all be all, but a good jumping off point to find those features and price points and stuff like that, that and customer support and what you like for UI. That's what these programs, this, this uh, video will help you figure out which kind of program you need to use. Well, until the next video, live well and write well.